The Gonzaga Bulldogs take on the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. Gonzaga basketball starts right now. We're in the holiday spirit here in Spokane, and we've got an early Christmas present for you on SWX, a great college basketball game between the 21st ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs, who are playing host to the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. Welcome inside the kennel, everybody. I'm Austin Getz, joined by the former Zag, Stephanie Hoff Freeman. We're feeling the spirit, uh, as you can tell. AJ Howell join our broadcast as well. Stephanie, you talk about two teams that are the powerhouses of their prospective programs, and it, just another great battle and another great start for Gonzaga. Yeah, you're exactly right. These are two great teams. Gonzaga comes in with a four-game winning streak. They're protecting a 24-home game winning streak. They played a tough pre-conference uh, schedule already, and this is going to be another tough one. Well, you talk about the battle inside the paint tonight. It is going to be a fun one to watch. Of course, for Gonzaga, Yvonne Ejim, the last three weeks, she's been the West Coast Conference Player of the Week, and she is just elevating her game even higher. We didn't think that was possible, but she's doing it. Absolutely. So not just three straight WCC Players of the Week, but a recent National Player of the Week honor. She's shooting at a high clip from the floor, from the free throw line. And just to put this in perspective, she is number two in the nation for field goals made this season. Ejim leads the West Coast Conference in scoring, leading the Summit League in scoring is Brooklyn Meyer, who will be her opponent in the paint tonight. Six double-doubles on the season, 17 points a game. Yeah, coming off of back-to-back -back games with a double-double, she's putting up about 11 and a half points more than she did last year. She's a physical player that can go over both shoulders, uses a lot of fakes, can cause a lot of trouble in the paint. We'll take a break and come back. we got starting lineups around the corner, and we'll hear Lisa Fortier's thoughts on her star, Yvonne Ejim. That's all coming up. College Hoops right here on SWX. Glad you're with us. Inside the kennel here, we're just moments away from game time between the 21st ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs and the South Dakota State Jackrabbits. Let's get you your starting lineup, which are brought to you by Numerica Credit Union. Numerica Credit Union, money answers for people who know Gonzaga does, in fact, exist. Plus, show your Bulldog pride with your Zags debit card offered only at Numerica, federally insured by NCUA. Step usual suspects for the Zags. The Trongs, Britta Maxwell, Eliza Hollingsworth, and Vaughn Ejim. If it's not broke, don't fix it. And you got a lot of experience on that starting five. Absolutely, yeah. This is a lineup we've seen for many games now. On the other side, Maddie Mathewitz, Paige Meyer, Brooklyn Meyer, Tori Nelson, and Madison Velastin. Those are your Numerica starting lineups. Let's toss it over to the third member of our broadcast team, A.J. Howell, who spoke with Lisa Fortier this morning and got her thoughts on Yvonne Ejim. A.J.? That's right, Austin. We heard Stephanie say earlier all the statistics, all the awards that Yvonne Ejim has accomplished and earned so far this season. But her head coach had some interesting thoughts into the strategy that goes behind how they've been playing her. Now, earlier in the season, she would get into foul trouble. They obviously want to be able to play her for as long as they can. So they've been strategic about sometimes putting her on the best player on the other team so she doesn't have to go over and play help defense as often, which is normally when she gets into trouble. But ultimately, the thing that sets her apart as a player that has so much experience is that she just keeps improving. She hasn't leveled up, guys. She has absolutely done that. You go back to when she was the sixth woman of the year a couple mm -hmm. years ago, and now the leading scorer in the conference. We're underway here at the kennel. It is the Zags who will start things off wearing their home white uniforms. 15 seconds left on the shot clock here. There's Kaylin Trong, the feed inside to Hollingsworth. A little too high, and it's going to be a turnover. Speaking of Kaylin Trong, sporting a mask. Stephanie, uh, something happened in that Rice game. She must have took a collision, so she's going to be having to deal with that for this game. Yeah, you can see a little bit of a Zorro look tonight, but shouldn't affect her too much. She's an experienced senior. Um, it's just a, something to help protect the, that area. Brooklyn Meyer on the paint, guarded by Yvonne Ejim. Those two go to battle, and the shot off. Yvonne wins round one with some great defense. Brenna Maxwell comes the other way for Gonzaga. And you can see already that you see Yvonne Ejim 
guarding Meyer down low, their best post player. And Brooklyn Meyer, she is going to look to dribble you down low, just like we saw, but Yvonne came on top in that last defensive possession. They tried to feed Yvonne inside. It was uh, taken away, so two turnovers early on for the Zags. Still scoreless here a minute into this ball game. Four seconds left on the shot clock for the Jackrabbits here. Inside Meyer, another tip pass. This one's taken away by Kaylin. Good defense again by Yvonne Ejim. Inside, Eliza Hollingsworth faces the basket. Zags working it around, looking for our first points in this game. Kaylee Trong calls for a screen from Hollingsworth. Nothing there, 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Lee for three, got it. And we're off and running here at the kettle. Kaylee Trong with an assist from her twin sister. Gets the Zags on the board. Now here's an answer on the other end. That one's off. Taking the shot was Tori Nelson that time. And it's so big when the guards are knocking down those three-point shots. It opens up the paint inside. And then look at this. If you do not hustle and get back, the Zags are going to make you pay every single time. And now a turnover. This is Gonzaga basketball. That was a beautiful feed a moment ago from Kaylin into Yvonne. You're Get a look at the three from Kaylee Trong that got the Zags on the board. And you could see the Jackrabbits defense had a hand up, but it's not close enough. These guards are too experienced. They're too good of shooters. You have to be right there. Early 5-0 lead for the Zags, trying to get out to a run to start the ball game. Britta Maxwell just inside the three-point line, hits the shot. It's a two for Maxwell, good on her first shot attempt of the night. If she gets, if Brenna Maxwell gets any space coming off those screens, she is ready to fire. She does not need hardly any time to get her shot off. Corner triple from Velastin was a little bit short. Zags still have the Jackrabbits looking for their first points. Here's Maxwell after the make on the last possession. Kay Lee, top of the key, looking for room. Nice pass inside, and Egypt lays it in. And a quick timeout from South Dakota State. 9-0 run out of the gate for Gonzaga. Good start for them here in the kennel. Tonight's keys to the game are brought to you by Northern Quest Resort and Casino. Earn your bragging rights at Northern Quest with more slot machines, table games, restaurants, lounges, and luxury hotel rooms than anyone else in the region. Northern Quest, yes, the best. More at northernquest.com. Dot com. Stephanie, your keys to the game so far. Well, we've already seen uh, most of these already. The transition pace really looked to pressure the Jackrabbits with an offensive pace. The Jackrabbits are a little bit thin because of injuries. We haven't gotten into that too much, but if, they, if Gonzaga can continue to push and really wear down that bench of the Jackrabbits, they're gonna have success. And then focus on the Myers, right? If you look at the, the points per game, both Myers are leading the Jackrabbits, limit their touches, make other players um, beat them. And then no tips, just grip. Don't go into the paint, just tipping the ball around for a rebound. Go up there and grip it and rip it and get it out and go. And uh, if they do that, like I said, we've seen these already so far in this game, and it's working. They're up 9-0. Those are your Northern Quest keys to the game. Yeah, 9-0 run for Gonzaga, which forced Aaron Johnston to call an early timeout as his team looking to not dig themselves too deep here. And now here's another turnover. Gonzaga still just keeping that stifling defense scoreless almost three minutes into this game. So this was something Gonzaga thought they could do. If they really brought some aggressive defensive pressure on the Jackrabbits, they could force some turnovers, and they've already forced the Jackrabbits into three. What another great feed. Brenna Maxwell got the layup, but the pass from Trong was just beautiful. That's her third assist already. So an 11-0 run here. Still early in this ball game, but the Jackrabbits got to find some points in a hurry. Kaylee Trong with great defense, couldn't quite get the steal. Jackrabbits looking to take advantage. They go into Meyer, Ejim right there. Meyer turns, puts it up and scores, gets the Jacks on the board. And you can see how difficult it is to guard Brooklyn Meyer when she's able to get into that dribble back down rhythm. It was just too easy, too deep for her. Ejim, Maxwell in the corner now. Over to Eliza Hollingsworth inside. Now we have a foul on the inside. This will come before the shot. 
That's just something else that Ejim does so well. She works so hard to get positioning. A lot of times you have to foul her or she's going to have a wide open bucket. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of decision making down there. Like you said, do I foul her or do I let her score? And if you're Brooklyn Meyer, I think you've got to, you're going to have to be careful because you can't get yourself in foul trouble. Like I said, the Jackrabbit bench just a little bit thinner because of those injuries. Callie Stokes into the game for the first time. For more on that, let's go back over to A.J. Howell. That's right, Austin. Mount Hybens checking in as well. Now, Lisa Fortier had a little bit of a comparison between the two of them. We were talking about players that don't necessarily score consistently, but still add some momentum and help out in the game as far as giving their teammates a rest. And she said both of those ladies are so good about just really showing up. They help the momentum. They help the team discipline and they're able to rebound which with if you saw Callie in the Cal game really um, helped on the stretch guys. Thank you AJ 13-2 last bucket was from Yvonne Ejim here we have a foul. Well just adding on about Callie Stokes she brings such an energy off that bench and so when you're coming off the bench you don't want to drop off you want really want to keep that momentum going and just like AJ was saying she's physical she's a bigger guard um, she comes in and doesn't always do the pretty stuff, right, for the Zags and gets it done that way. But then she also has made big shots for them and those big re rebounds. She's a really fun player to watch. Tori Nelson drives right to the rack and scores. Zags still controlling the pace of the game here. Kaylee Trong end to end. Can't quite get the English. Jacks with their first chance in transition. Wild shot thrown up towards the rim. Kaylee comes her way with the rebound. Avon Ejim was in there too. About halfway gone here in this first quarter. A great start for Gonzaga. They lead by nine. There's Hybins and now Callie Stokes reversing the ball around. 15 left on the shot clock. Hybins looking for Ejim inside. She got the positioning and scores. And that offensive ability of Gonzaga, the, the patience that they just showed where they continued to move the ball side to side and then they got the mismatch that they wanted with Ejim down low with a smaller guard on her. It was just perfect. Great eight, patience. Eight points out of the gates. Here's a pass right to Hyben. She gets the steal. Zags forcing a lot of turnovers to start here. They were looking to go right back into Ejim. You see her working down there on the block. They go into her. Ejim for 10 points. Yes. What a start of on Egypt's having. Seven of the 12 games this season, she's had more than 20 points. It's looking like she's headed for another performance of that variety. And here you get a look, Stephanie, of what I thought was just a great entry pass from Mount Hybens. Yeah, it was made on the right side, away from that pressure. You could see that was the mismatch that I was talking about. Colbeck only listed at 5'10". Yvonne getting a seal on the side, and then Hybens feeding on the correct side, right? Away from that pressure. South Dakota State trying to answer. That was Paige Meyer that time, shot no good. Jack Rabbit's able to control the rebound. Go inside, now Brooklyn Meyer through a double team, hits off the side of the backboard. Stokes comes away with it, Zags have numbers. Callie Stokes drives, puts it up, and scores! Callie Stokes with her first points on the board. So there you go, another just doing a little bit of everything. She leads the transition and then finishes the bucket. Boy, Lisa Fortier has to be absolutely thrilled with this start. Gonzaga has just come out hot on offense and stifling on defense to start this game. Paige Meyer, pull up shot, no good. Offensive rebound, but then a block. Here's Stokes the other way, Kaylin Trong. Again, sporting that mask. Stokes looked for a cutting Hollingsworth, couldn't quite find her. Stokes, Hollingsworth. Now here's Brenna Maxwell, 10 left on the shot clock. Maxwell for three, little long. And the rebound by Meyer. Here come the Jacks. Misa Viam in the game for the first time, and another block. Pull up from Kaylin. No good. Stokes went for the rebound, can't quite get to it. It goes out of bounds. It will be South Dakota State basketball. And Austin, I think you're spot on. Not only have they come out red hot offensively, but I think a lot of that is, is because they have been so locked in defensively. They have made 
Brooklyn Myers and Paige Myers nights or days here not so fun so far. I mean, we're talking about the two leading scorers on their team, and Brooklyn Meyer only has two points. Paige Meyer doesn't have any. Um, they have been locked in defensively and have just really come out and shown great team defense. Those two a combined one for six to start the game. Ten seconds left on the shot clock here. Jenna Hopp tries to feed it inside. Hybens with great hands down there for another takeaway. Here's Mount. Swings it around. Gonzaga with about two minutes to go here in the first quarter, leading by 15. Maxwell, and now we'll get a foul as Brenna tries to drive. That's going to go against Jenna Hopp. That'll be her first. Esther Little checking in for the first time today as Callie Stokes heads to the bench. Kaylee Trong driving, kicks it to the corner. There's Little back to Hollingsworth, top of the key. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Feet inside, Hybens faces the basket. Mount drives, swings it. Esther will put it up and score. Another good feed from Mount Hybens. Mount has really great vision. I've seen her make some tremendous passes so far this year. Um, we didn't get to see her a lot last year. She is, uh, it's so great to see her out there this year because she brings such another piece of size to Gonzaga and she can stretch the, out, the defense out as well. She is really good at driving as well. You could see she's got the baseline drive there and then found Esther Little. Yeah, you talk about somebody who stuck with it and you Glad to see them get some time on the board. Started her career at Syracuse, played just one game before had a season-ending injury. Came here to Gonzaga last year, battled injuries, was able to appear in 12 games last season. Back on the floor this year, and Lisa Fortier will be glad to have her. Here's Byam, two for two trip at the free throw line. In 21-6 here with 90 seconds to go in our first frame. Glad you're with us here on SWX. Brenna Maxwell, mid-range jumper, rattles out. Tough break there from the senior from Gig Harbor. Jackrabbit still trying to just put together some points. Jenna Hopp drives, and there'll be a blocking foul that will put her on the free throw line. Brenna Maxwell a little bit out of position there. Tried to come over and play some help defense, but just couldn't quite get there in, in time. We've seen, we, uh, well, I've seen Maxwell take quite a few charges this year, so she does actually a nice job of on that help defense coming over and getting her feet set, but like you said, just not quite there this time. Get a look at Jenna Hopp, the freshman from Glenwood, Iowa. Two for two trip at the line. Von Egan back on the floor. Kaylee Trong, now Brenna Maxwell over to Esther Little in the corner, and again, Ejim winning the position battle. The help defense came, she passed out of it that time. Now here's Kaylee Trong, pull up, three on the way, and good. You can see she was almost daring that defender to sag off and go under that ball screen. She made her pay. But that's the thing, when you're guarding these Gonzaga guards, you can't go underneath. You have to either travel through or you gotta have some post help there because they don't need much space. And it's not just one player. I mean, we're talking about everybody in the wing right now can shoot that three. We don't see Esther Little do it a lot, but you have to respect that shot. Eliza Hollingsworth picks up her first foul. She'll go to the bench. Callie Stokes right back out. Paige Meyer drives, can't get the shot to go. Zag's able to corral the rebound. And again, like you mentioned, Steph, just making Paige and Brooklyn Meyer really have to work for those even shot attempts, and they're not making them easy shot attempts just either. Just everything's uncomfortable for them right now. They're forcing them the direction they want them to. They're playing the scout exactly how they want. They're reading the players and making them go to their off, not preferred options. Ejim 
Up and under, can't get it to go. Three seconds left here in the quarter, and the Jacks will have one look at it. Meyer from half court. Oh. Ooh. Was on target, a little bit off. A dream first quarter for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. They lead 24-8 after a dominating first quarter. We'll take a break and come back with the second quarter on the way. You're watching college basketball. Glad you're with us right here on SWX. Gonzaga basketball broadcast is brought to you by Arby's, your delicious neighborhood meat crafter. Stop by Arby's today. Arby's, we have the meats. Ready for the start of the second quarter here. Gonzaga races out to a 24 to eight lead over South Dakota State. And Stephanie, just looking at the stats, I think the thing that jumps out to me, five turnovers, some four, some not so much, but just South Dakota State turning it over at that kind of clip, they're not gonna be able to hang around with Gonzaga. No, and Gonzaga turned those five turnovers into 11 points. Um, Gonzaga, out of their 11 makes, had nine assists in that first quarter. That was incredible. And then both Myers, Brooklyn Meyer and Paige Meyer, Gonzaga held them to just one of eight shooting. Um, it was all Gonzaga. The Jackrabbits shot 15% in that first quarter compared to Gonzaga 69%. Yeah, never want to have more uh, turnovers than made buckets in a quarter. Yeah. Ooh, Paige Meyer, nice move, but Yvonne Ejim says it doesn't matter. Sends that shot out of bounds. Get another look at it here. Got around one defender, but Definitely helps to have Ejim lurking around there in the paint. Yeah, Paige, Paige Meyer, she is very crafty. She's a shifty scorer. Uh, she's got a hesitation. She likes drawing that contact in there. She's actually coming off a Player of a Week award herself for the Summit League. Um, you could see her there. But again, Gonzaga is locked in on her to where it is really hard for her to make anything right now. Eliza Hollingsworth rattles home a three, continuing a hot stretch that dates back to her last game against Rice. She had 21 points and was seven of 10 shooting in that game. The game before that, she was one of 11. So Stephanie, great to see her stick with it and, and have a great shooting performance the next time out. Yeah, and we talked about how the guards stretch the floor so that Yvonne Ejim can work on the paint, but Eliza Hollingsworth, she brings out that other big defender because she shoots the three so well. She's shooting 36%. Turnover here as Ejim was trying to find a cutting Hollingsworth, but now the other way is Mathewitz puts it up and gets the friendly roll. She'll go to the line for one more. And this has been a great start for the Jackrabbits here. They're really looking to attack that rim, drawing the contact. Mathewitz getting out, able to just go one-on-one -on -one there and drawing the contact. Mathewitz, the sophomore from Sleepy Eye, Minnesota, coming off a career-high 21-point mm -hmm. performance against Dort in NAIA school. That is who South Dakota State faced the game before this one. She was 8 of 14 shooting in the game. She hits the free throw as well. Trims the lead down to 12. Yeah, and Mathewitz, before that, the game before that was her career high of 16 points, so she's really trending up right now for the Jackrabbits. Kaylin Trong back on the floor. Here's Callie Stokes. Brenna Maxwell. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Trong off a ball screen. Ejim now Maxwell, Brenna for three. Off the back iron, no good that time. Jacks come away with the rebound. Now here's Meyer, Paige Meyer into the paint, looking for the pass, Ejim deflected it and Trong comes away with the steal. Great rotation by Kaylin Trong right there. She got beat but then rotated off onto the dump player and was able to pass off, uh, pick off that pass. Zag still doing it on defense. Offense hasn't come as easy here in the second quarter so far. Maxwell at the free throw line, hesitates, goes through traffic, can't get the shot to go. Offensive board and a put back for Ejim. She's got 12 points already. Well, let's just talk about Yvonne a little bit more here. She's averaging 8.7 rebounds a game, but almost half of those, almost four of those are offensive rebounds a game. She gets in there on the offensive glass and does work. And with how tight the Zags have played some games recently going to overtime against Cal. Rice was a close game. One or two extra possessions in a game that she can mm -hmm. give you can be absolutely vital. Bit of a wild possession here for the Zags, but it'll end in a turnover there as 
Armstrong was trying to lead Ejim a little too far. We get a look at the block from Avon Ejim a second ago. You can just see, it, she's kind of deceiving in a way, but she's got really great arm length, and they get out there and able to get to that block. Callie Stokes with a volleyball block right there. Jack still have possession here. And now we'll get a foul as Yvonne Ejim's gonna pick one up here. She was guarding Tori Nelson close, but looked like she was in legal guarding position for a second, but then it looks like some feet got tied up. And that is the first foul on Egypt. Seven minutes to go here in the first half. South Dakota State chipping away at the lead, but Gonzaga is still in front. Pass inside, intercepted Hollingsworth. They are playing those passing lanes so aggressively and so, you know, so good right now. Well, yeah, and just getting around in those uh, in front of the posts defensively, so that way they're they're fronting them and denying that passing lane. Kaylin Trong, and we'll get a offensive foul here for an illegal screen, and this is going to go against Hybens. <laughs> Naya Ojuku checking in for the first time today. The freshman transfer from the University of Idaho, or excuse me, University of Utah from Meridian, Idaho. Mathewitz with it now. See the Zags just coming up and playing tight on ball defense. Blaston, Byam. And that's Kolbeck, who had it tipped away for a moment, but able to corral it. Mathewitz is going to get called for a travel. Callie Stokes closed out, was trying to go for the pass fake, but just got the feet going before the ball. So, Stephanie, the offense has cooled off a little bit for Gonzaga. Mm -hmm. What do you do if, if you're the Zags? Is there a certain, you know, action you're trying to run to maybe get the uh, – get things back going or just keep shooting it as Brenna well, Maxwell, of course, knocks down a jumper, as I say that. Part of that is, yeah, continue to work your offense, move the ball side to side, look for your mismatches, and look for those good shots. The other thing is, is that this Jack Rabbit team is a very disciplined team that is very successful in the Summit League. This is a team that, you know, has the average 25 wins um, the last 10 years. You know, they've made 11 trips to the NCAA. They are they are very experienced, so they're not just going to go away. Well, just as I was talking about the offensive woes, the Zags rip off five points in rapid succession. Zags pushing the lead out to 34-15. We'll take a break and come back here to the kennel. Coverage of the game is brought to you by Primera. Primera, proud partner of the Gonzaga basketball. Well, right here, you can just see a series of defensive plays by Gonzaga. Look at how difficult they have made it for the Jackrabbits here today. Their length, their pressure on the ball, working to get around the post. Look at the help coming over. We can see right here, and they have, because of this, the, the Jackrabbits are only shooting 26%, but then look at how it translates to the offense for Gonzaga here. They're 15 of 22, shooting 68%. A 7-0 run for the Zags over the last couple of minutes. They have kept the Jackrabbits off the scoreboard for now over three minutes of game time. As this game all of a sudden ballooned to a 19-point lead. At the start of the quarter, it looked like the Jacks were yes. making some inroads on that big lead, but that's also the you know the problem if you if you're on the wrong end of a fast start for a team. And remember the Zags started out just red hot and got out to a big run as here's a mid-range jumper knocked down by Madison Velastin. But that's the shot that you want Velastin to take. She is a sharp shooter. She is a three-point shooter. She has only made two shots. That's her third shot that hasn't been behind the three-point line. She shoots 47% behind that three-point line. If you're Gonzaga, that's the shot you want to give her. Brenna Maxwell, we're seeing her do a lot of work in the mid-range in this game. Wasn't able to come up with that last shot. Under five minutes to go, here's a nice drive to the basket. The lay-in won't go, tipped into the corner. This will be Gonzaga basketball. It was the effort by Byam to try and keep the ball alive, just nobody there to tip it to.
Kalen Trong brings it up the floor for the Zags. Here's Brenna Maxwell now. Callie Stokes drives and through traffic is able to lay it up and in. Scores and then immediately picks up her defender for <laughs> full court press. A lot of responsibilities out there for Kelly Stokes, but on that drive, you could see how powerful and strong she is when she goes up for that layup. Here's Mathewitz now. And right down in the paint uh, before the foul, there was great defense by Eliza Hollingsworth to deny the pass, but Jackson had bailed out with a foul here. Kaylin Trong and Eliza Hollingsworth head to the bench. Back on the floor are Yvonne Ejim and Esther Little for the Zags. Paige Meyer drives. Looking for Elaine. Kicks it out. Velastin for three. Buries it. Well, Velastin coming into this game shoots 47%. That would lead the Summit League as we see a Juku draw foul. That would lead the Summit League if she had the necessary 50 mm, attempts mm -hmm. taken, but her percentage is the best in the conference right now. Brooklyn Meyer picks up her second foul, and she'll have to go to the bench. So Naya Juku goes to the line. Back when she was growing up in Meridian, she was the 2021 Idaho Gatorade Player of the Year. Can't hit the first free throw there. And a player that comes off the bench for Gonzaga that's very athletic. She plays inside, listed only at six foot, but she has, like I said, the athleticism, her ability to, to move and get off the floor very quickly. Um, also, very strong as well. Mathewitz, mid-range jumper, just gets it over the outstretched arm of Esther Little. Maddie Mathewitz, a good start in this first half. Stokes. Trying to split traffic, able to get to that basketball and trip over a defender. That'll draw the foul. She kind of had to win a race to that ball right there. Lisa Biome picks up the foul. Three and a half minutes to go here in the first half. Zags leading 36-22. Juku right inside Ejim, and Ejim will be fouled. This basket will not count. But again, the when you're trying to deny her the basketball so mm -hmm. aggressively, it's going to happen. You're going to pick up some fouls. That's just why Gonzaga just keeps going back to that. Well, she just pins her defender so low. I mean, her defender was almost basically underneath the hoop there. Into the corner, Esther Little. Zach's working it around. Claire O'Connor, another freshman, also out on the floor. And another foul. The previous one was on Byam. That's on Paige Meyer. So three fouls on this possession. One more will send the Zags to the line. Here's Stokes. To Little. Right back Stokes inside Ojuku. Drives up and under, gets it to go. Acrobatic move from Naya Juku. On the other end. Oh, nice pass yeah. inside, and Byam lays it in. Yeah, nice find. Just some miscommunication there by the Zags defense. Boston with the pass that time. Inside, Ejim. Over to Claire O'Connor, the lefty tries the three and buries it. And if you saw the ball movement on that last offensive possession, that was great. Just working it around the, the arc there, side to side and finding the open shooter. Paige Meyer shot a little bit long. Esther comes down with the rebound. Going back to O'Connor, the freshman from Bellevue, Washington, went to Lakeside High School. Remember back in an exhibition game that the Zags had earlier this year, Lisa Fortier was really impressed with her effort, especially rebounding. It sounds like what we've been talking about with Callie Stokes. If you, if you rebound for Lisa Fortier, she'll find a <laughs> way to get you on the floor. Here's a look at the O'Connor three and the ball movement that led up to it. Yeah, so that ball came all the way over on the right side. Then you work it inside 
And then Yvonne Ejem just facing up, able to read the defense and finding the correct player there for the open shooter. And you like that. You like getting your freshman that easy look, and that's a big time confidence booster. Callie Stokes hits the first freebie as we're in the bonus now. Two for two trip, and Avon Ejim falls to the floor as some bodies got crossed up there. I believe everyone's all right. No foul was called here. They just stopped play momentarily. So Zags again up by 19 here in the first half. Not exactly the performance we were expecting. Thought that the Jackrabbits might have been playing them a little bit tighter. Again, we still have the whole second half to go, but this is a program that is no slouch. Inside, Nelson denied by Hollingsworth, has to kick it out. They go right back inside. Now here's a mid-range shot, and that one's short. Great help defense, team defense, just all up and down the roster. And Austin, I think though that's what you see if Gonzaga, offense comes really easy to them. They all can shoot, they can put up big numbers, we've seen it. But when they, as a unit, collectively play team defense and lock in, this is a very difficult team. It's, I mean, this is just a, a sparkling performance by there as Kaylin knocks down a three, brings the lead out to 22. And we see just <laughs> the, bench. <laughs> the Zags bench explodes. <laughs> Thought Stacy Kleinsmith was going to run on the court there for a second. <laughs> I saw a few of the coaches over there <laughs> thinking they were going to get out on the court. You talk about this Gonzaga staff and all the coaches that have been with head coach Lisa Fortier her entire tenure mm -hmm. here. As here we have a pass tipped out of bounds. Of course, her husband Craig Fortier, but Stacy Kleinsmith and Jordan Green have been with her since she took over as head coach here. And to have that kind of continuity on a coaching staff, I have to imagine it just makes a head coach's life so much easier. Well, you're talking about a decade together and talk about the consistency there, not only for just the Gonzaga program, but the players as well. We're looking at a lot of um, experienced player out here, coming back fifth year players, seniors out there. Um, this is, you've got a ton of experience, not only up from the coaching staff and consistency, but also from the players. We got a foul here on the, going for the rebound. I believe they might have got Yvonne Ejim. Yep, they did get Ejim, her second personal foul. And that's gonna put Byam on the line. Ejim goes to the bench for the Rest of this half, I'm sure we're under a minute to play here before halftime. By him, a player who is in her fourth year with the program, hasn't been able to crack that starting rotation, but this year compared to the years past, she has tripled her minutes per game. Plays about 16 per game. So a player that's stuck with it for head coach Aaron Johnston, and he's finding a way to get her on the court more. Hits both free throws. And a great free throw shooter as well, 84% uh, on the season. So that's one of those luxuries where you can't just foul her, right? Because she's going to go to the free throw line and knock those down. Zags taking their time. Shot clock still on here at the final minute. We're down to 12 seconds. Hollingsworth skip pass, Trong. Just a change of defensive look here as well. Little zone look. Wild offensive rebound, but Hollingsworth was ready for it. Lays it up and in. And one of the difficult things with playing zone is boxing out. And you can see uh, Hollingsworth being the benefactor of that. Paige Meyer to beat the buzzer, can't do it. And that puts a cap on a fantastic first half for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. They lead South Dakota State 48 to 29. Just what a performance, Stephanie. Just outstanding. On both ends. Uh, really, I think the defense has led to great offensive play, transition play. Um, they, they're, boy, they're looking really sharp at all angles. Let's go over to AJ Howe. She has head coach Lisa Fortier. AJ? 
Coach, we know you have some really high standards for defense. You're up by 20 points at halftime. What's the message to the team? Well, the first quarter defense was amazing. We gave up eight points, and we gave up 21 in the second quarter. I still think we're being active. Um, I think we're we need to use the smart and hard part. In the second half, I, or second quarter, we played hard, but I don't think we played as smart. We let them get to their strong hand and to their strength. So we got to keep. Keep them to their weakness as well as playing hard. It's not just good enough to do one or the other. You come out to an 11-0 run, and that's only part of the offensive dominance that you guys have seen. Once again, what needs to be corrected moving forward, and how have you been able to take advantage of the mismatch in this? Yeah, I think we, when we're sharing the ball and we're getting the ball to multiple sides of the court, we're much better off. We get really good shots, uh, most of which we make. It's just when the ball's sticking that we get ourselves in a little bit of trouble or when we try to go one-on-one -on -one in an area that we shouldn't. So we've got to kind of let, let the offense work for us a little bit and you know utilize our teammates. Thank you, Coach. AJ, thank you. All right, we'll take a break, come back with our halftime coverage. Again, it's a 48-29 lead for the Zags here at home. A dominating first half on both ends of the floor for the Zags. They've got a big lead. We'll break it down when we come back. Zaga Halftime Report is brought to you by Coeur d'Alene Casino. Join us at Coeur d'Alene Casino for a mouth-watering steak dinner, pampering spa treatment, or the hottest games around. Coeur d'Alene Casino, a proud sponsor of Gonzaga Athletics. Coeur d'Alene Casino, welcome home. Back here at the kennel. Yeah, warm up those hands by the fire here as the Zags have warmed up the kennel nets with how they shot in the first half. Austin Getz, Stephanie Hawk Freeman joining you here at the kennel. The sweaters are still on. Santa Spike is in uh, the holiday season. A lot of stuff to celebrate if you're the Zags and so far in the first half. Just recapping a, a first half that was truly dominant in every sense of the word. Yeah, and I, really we have to look at the defensive end. With it. They forced uh, the Jackrabbits into eight turnovers, which turned into 15 points. And then the other piece of, that I'm looking at, we look at the top scores for the Jackrabbits, Brooklyn Meyer and Paige Meyer. They averaged 34 points, about 34 points for them. They were held to just seven points in that first half. And you can just see it came in a multiple of ways, a lot, using their length, getting blocked shots, um, getting over in front of the post for the defense, help side, and then getting the ball out and getting those easy transition looks, really putting the pressure on the Jackrabbits. Holding them to shooting just 34% in the game. And the other factor, I mean, we talked about it in the pregame, and Yvonne Ejim has lived up to it 12 points in that first half, doing so much on the defensive end, maybe stuff that doesn't show up on the scoreboard. Only one rebound, two blocks, but the fact that she's been able to deny Brooklyn Meyer those entry passes, not let the Jackrabbits go through there, has been really impressive. Well, yeah, tough. Talk about a tough defensive assignment, right? You're guarding their leading scorer, but then she comes in and has, goes to work offensively. She's shooting six of seven from the floor for 12 points. I mean, that's incredible. And just credit her teammates, though. That comes from, like, what Coach Fortier was saying, is not letting that ball stick, moving it around, and then having her teammates knock down their open shots so that it opens up the paint for her to go to work. A lot to be happy for if you're the Zags. We'll take a break and come back with more of your halftime coverage here at the Kennel. Zags up big. Glad you're with us here on SWX. Tune in to Nonstop Local KHQ and SWX on Wednesday, December 20th, as the Jackson State Tigers travel to the kennel to take on the 10th ranked Gonzaga Bulldogs. Tip off set for 6 o'clock. Gonzaga basketball live on Wednesday night on Nonstop Local KHQ and SWX, your home for local sports. Zag men suffered a tough loss Friday night to UConn at Climate Pledge Arena. Looking to get the mojo back going here uh, in the kennel. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we've got the third quarter right around the corner here at the kennel. Zags up big. We'll see how the second half goes. Everybody's in the holiday spirit here at the kennel, and the Gonzaga Bulldogs celebrating, but maybe not quite celebrating yet, but feeling good up 48-29 over South Dakota State. Austin gets. Stephanie Hawk Freeman. We'll look at some of the first half stats. Stephanie, the one that just jumps off the page and I cannot stop staring at. 
20 of 30 from the field for Gonzaga, 67%. Yeah, and 14 assists on those 20 makes. And let's look on the other side of South Dakota State, 10 for 29. They only had two makes in that first quarter, and really they had a much better second quarter where they only Gonzaga only won that quarter by three points. But you can just see the discrepancy here. You know, the three-point goals, points off a of turnover is another big one, and points in the paint. Look at that. Uh, we mentioned not a lot of second chance points for Gonzaga. Well, that's when you don't miss. <laughs> they're not missing a lot. So. Bench points, too. Just got to point out the contributions up and down the roster for the Zags. You, when you have such a good starting five with so much talent like they do, literally mm -hmm. getting their entire starting back, five uh, back from a year ago, kind of sometimes you, the bench players get lost in the shuffle, but they – you know, that second unit, it, it really is where you find the success in March and being able to have that, that talent to come off the bench, and the Zags have that. They do, and, and the bench players coming off the bench, their roles aren't necessarily to be those scorers because a lot of times they're still in there with um, those starters out there, and so their roles are really to, if you look at, like, Callie Stokes and Esther Little, their job is more for those hustle plays, locking in defensively, and... Um, but that doesn't mean that they can't. They still take the opportunities when they arise. They take those good shots, and that's why you see that. Typical starting five for the Zags. To start this second half, the Trongs, Liza Hollingsworth, Von Egypt, Brennan Maxwell. Everyone on the Zags side of the starting five has scored, led by Ejim with 12. Hollingsworth. Eight points, had, did not miss a shot, was two for two from three as well. We talked about her hot shooting stroke that she had against mm -hmm. Rice, and it's continuing here. Underway here in the second half here on SWX, the Zags start this portion of the game up 19 and nearly made it 21 with a pass inside to Yvonne Ejim. Shot was no good, but Zags will retain the possession here. So what also makes this Gonzaga team so great offensively is their timing and being patient of setting those screens when they're supposed to, the movement. And you'll see on that last play, they pass the ball to Vaughn where she is almost literally underneath the basket and no defender can really stop her from that angle. That was uh, two point blank misses from her. Don't see that a lot. They weren't easy shots. Uh, it wasn't quite a layup, but usually she, we're just so used to seeing her score from any kind of angle <laughs> and any kind of defense down there was expecting one of those to go down. Zags come away scoreless on their first possession of the second half. We were talking about this. South Dakota State actually won that second quarter. They outscored the Zags 24-21 as here's a layup from Tori Nelson. We'll see if they can string together some baskets here. Their largest run of the game has only been five points. So the Zags haven't let things balloon and get out of control so far in this game. And Austin, I'm going to correct you, though, a little bit. Gonzaga won that. Oh, excuse quarter, me. Quarter, yes, so excuse me. Yeah but played much, right. much better than that first quarter. And there was Brenna Maxwell with uh, another basket there. Inside, well, or excuse me, uh, Mathewitz with the bucket there. Great cut. Mathewitz is really uh, kind of tricky to defend because she is constantly moving off the ball and is a great cutter. She has great vision, and you can see her team finding there. Kaylee Trong missed a layup there. Jackrabbits go inside. Brooklyn Meyer, quiet first half. Egypt's defense, a big reason for that is good defense there again. And a miss by Brooklyn Meyer, but you can see on that post up how low and strong she is. Yeah, her and Egypt just leaning on each other right now down there in the paint. A lot of, uh, a lot of power in, in both those players. Here's a kickball violation. The Zags will keep the basketball. And this South Dakota State team plays very physical. You can see how strong they are. Um, again, they are one of the most consistent programs um, out there. Uh, just the coming into Gonzaga, <laughs> it's a really difficult place to play. That time we see Jim make the basket through traffic. Vani just off to a great start to the season as here we've got the turnover as Paige Meyer lost that basketball. Thought it might have gone off of Egypt, but instead it's another turnover. That's now nine turnovers for South Dakota State. There's the Egypt bucket. Zags have not quite been able to push this lead over 20 so far in this game. 
would do so with a basket on this possession. Maxwell penetrates the paint, pull up, mid-range is good. Boy, I don't think I've seen her take this many shots inside the arc in a game in a long time, but she is just money from that elbow. She is, she is finding that shot this year a lot more, and it is really pretty. When she gets to that elbow free throw line, and it she rises up, and it just looks so clean and sharp. You talk about just the, the shooting touch that she had a season ago when she was a West Coast Conference first teamer. Here's a look at the shot. She led the country, again, the yeah. country in three-point percentage. Here's a kick to the corner, Kaylin Trong rattles one home. Maxwell led the country in three-point percentage with 48% and also set the Gonzaga free throw percentage mm -hmm. record with 93% a season ago. Zags really open it up here in the third quarter as Velastin tries to answer with a three of her own. High off the back of the backboard and comes down with it. Zags come away with it. Floating, nice touch pass. Edrum lays it in. Kaylee just dropped that in the bucket. It's the vision, recognizing where her teammate is going to be and not where she's currently at. And we've seen the vision by these guards, but let's talk about the vision by the post as well. We saw in the play before where Hollingsworth found Trong for that open three. These players have played with each other for so long that they know where they're gonna be and they find each other. Nelson can't answer and Kaylee comes away with the rebound. That last assist to, on the last possession was her fifth of the game. Here's Kaylin Maxwell, this time a three. Ooh, can't quite get it to go. Offensive board by Hollingsworth, and one. Just too much firepower. Just too much firepower by the Zags. They are just so deadly. I mean, they've got everybody. Like I said, they're finding each other. They're going to work on the boards. They're finishing. They're looking sharp. Let's go over to A.J. Howell, who has more on Eliza Hollingsworth. Guys, I asked head coach Lisa Fortier a couple weeks ago her thoughts on kind of the emergence of Hollingsworth this season and what was different, what was clicking for Eliza. She said, you know, she's always been consistent in rebounding, but she's learning to be consistent across the board. And she said the offense is coming. So it's pretty interesting to see just in a little over a week how that's panned out. Guys. Um, talking about the offense, though, she is perfect. She is four for four from the field and two for two behind the three-point line and then one for one from the free throw line. So dating back to her uh, game a, a game ago, she has now hit 11 of her last 15 shots. She is on a hot streak. Jenna Hopp will go to the free throw line here. One area the Jackrabbits were perfect in in the first half. They were seven of seven at the charity stripe. It was Hollingsworth who picked up that last foul, her second personal. You talk about this game, especially if it keeps trending this way. Talking to Lisa Fortier this morning, I asked her about with three games in six days, is here's Maxwell. Oh, she buries it. Everything coming up Zags here in the kennel. But I asked Lisa Fortier with three games in six days starting mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. if there was going to be a, an effort more than usual to maybe try and get some of the starters some rest. She said that it wasn't going to make it a, a goal per se. She always says she, she says she always tries to get everybody less than 30 minutes a game. But it'll be interesting to see how deep on the bench she goes here. They're short a few bodies with some injuries. As here's Maxwell again, but a great pass from Callie Stokes. She immediately turned around and pointed at Callie. Yeah, talking about that road trip going down to Arizona, always a really tough defensive physical team. And then New Mexico, and then at Portland, um, those are some tough road games. But, you know, you just keep, you look at the Zags, and they just keep getting a little better, a little better, a little better. And they're closing in. I mean, they're really fixing those little things that they got to fix to be a great, great team. I mean, they're good. Maxwell checks off the floor with 15 points to a hearty applause here of the kennel crowd. Mount Hybens with the active hands, tips ones away. Another turnover and another steal for the Zags. Kaylee Trong end to end. Can't quite get the finish with the left hand. 
under five minutes to go here in the third quarter. The Zags up 30 on South Dakota State. And now we have a foul inside the paint. That'll take us to a break. Zags flexing their muscles here at home. 21st ranked team in the country, playing like it. Tonight's smiles of the game are brought to you by Delta Dental. We're on a mission to help make Washington State 100% cavity free. To learn more, visit cavityfreewa.com to see how we are making a difference in our community. Brought to you by Delta Dental of Washington. Proud supporters of Healthy Smiles and your Gonzaga Bulldogs. Stephanie, the Zags are a team that likes to have fun no matter the score, but a lot to smile about if you're Lisa Fortier and company in this one. Yeah, they came out at uh, halftime, uh, locked back in, and boy, I mean, they're outscoring South Dakota State 19 to eight in the third so far. And we got a foul away from the basketball. I believe this went against Nio Juku. Uh, that really is, I'm glad you brought that up, Stephanie, because it really impressed me, because sometimes you see a team get out to a big lead and then, you know, maybe take their foot off the gas, let a team sneak back into it as Jenna Hopp hits a three. Not in this game. Again, I go back to the fact that the biggest run that the Jackrabbits have had in this game is only five points. The Zags have not allowed them to string together any positive possessions. Or, yeah, or to get any momentum going or flow or consistency, just have really taken them out. Um, of the game, both offensively and defensively. Kaylin Trong can't quite hit from the elbow. You just have to wonder how much that mask makes things tougher. I mean, we've seen Kaylin have a good night as Bayern scores. He's got, she's got six points, a bit of a tough night shooting. She's two for six. You just wonder if it doesn't obscure your vision, but just knowing that it's there, if it, I, 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 you know, I have to ask her, I've never talked to anyone who has played with uh, a mask like that, uh, you know, how much it, it alters you or if it's a mental thing or, or what. Uh, I think it could be, you know, it just depends on the player, but I think you just recognize that it's just another part. I mean, you, you've already got braces on a knee, yeah, right, you know, right, so right. it's just another thing that um, maybe takes a little adjustment to, but, She's a basketball player and, you know, she's going to go out there and compete and I, I don't think too much. I think it's just one of those where Gonzaga finds the players, they play so well and whoever is open, they take that right. shot. So it may not be her right. night tonight. Yeah, and it's not that she's chucked up a lot of shots. She's only taken six shots. Right. It's And it's not to say that, you know, she's playing poorly either. Um, but it's just one of those things that maybe that's just not what's being open or you know given to them tonight. I believe they're looking at this to see if uh, there might have been something along the line of a, there wasn't a foul call, but Esther Little took, uh, I don't know if it was a shoulder or an elbow here, you get a look at it. Yeah, Esther caught I, I don't know, either a shoulder or elbow, forearm maybe, up around the face. So I think they're looking at this to see if there was any kind of foul here. There wasn't a foul called on the floor. They stopped the game, I think, just to make sure Esther was okay. Well, I think they're going to check to make sure there wasn't any contact, right. you know, in the head, exactly. above the shoulders, and uh, making sure that the it was it was just a basketball play, right. not excessive. Yeah. We'll get another look at it here. Esther on the left there. Ooh, it looks like she caught Jenna Hopps. It looked like she might have hit her head. Maybe a little cheekbone. Yeah, that definitely wouldn't feel good. Referees have come together here at center court. Here it is one more time. You can see the right shoulder. Oh, it's her yeah. head. The back of Jenna Hopp's head yeah. hit Esther Little right in the face. That's bone on bone. That hurts. Esther was ready to keep playing. They said, let's take a break and, and, uh, and look at this. Looks like uh, everything's been sorted out. Zags are walking like they're walking back on defense. Yeah, so it'll be Jackrabbit ball here, and Esther stays on the floor. I don't think there you could do anything there. It's not like no. hot threw her head back. She was just trying to pivot. Caught Esther on the cheek there. 67-42, and what has been a great showing for the Gonzaga Bulldogs so far in this game. About three and a half minutes remaining. 
here in the third quarter. Here's Mathewitz. Now Ellie Kolbeck back in the game. Gets it off back to Mathewitz. Who will step back in mid-range. Can't get it to go. And Nia Juku comes away with the rebound. Here's Ejim. Nia fighting for position down low. Here's Kaylee Trong. Another mid-range shot on the way is good. Boy, you just wonder if maybe there's something that the scout team saw on film of, of thinking the Jackrabbits were uh, susceptible to, to mid-range looks because I, I, I can't remember the Zags even taking a contested mid-range shot as Von Egypt with an emphatic rejection there. I think you're just seeing a, a very experienced offense working their sets yeah. and taking what what's given to them. And there's something to be said about players, and I feel like this is, you can almost say it for everyone on the Zags, and, you know, Kaylee with the latest example here of feeling the space mm -hmm. and knowing that, you know, I could drive to the hoop here and hey, I might even get fouled, but I have an open look right here and, and, and I'm gonna take it. Well, yeah, Gonzaga sets a lot of on-ball screens just because you have the Trongs out there that are so smart and know how to read the defense, just like you said. So right there, Trong, yep. <laughs> right? But like when they come off that ball screen, you know, they're that paint's open, and so there's no need to continue to drive and force the issue. Esther Little picks up the foul after the rebound. Kaylin grabbed the offensive board, dribbled out. Nobody picked her up. She said, I'll shoot that. Did that answer your question yeah, about does, the mask? It does, yeah, okay. yeah. Doesn't seem to be uh, affecting her too much. <laughs> Here's Paige Meyer to run the point for the Jackrabbits. Tori Tolefson is checked in the game. This is an interesting story. She is actually a standout as we got a double dribble here. Tolefson is actually a standout on the South Dakota State softball team. And I believe it's a situation uh, when the Jackrabbits lost two players before the season due to injury, Callie Tyson and Haley Timmer. I'm not sure, I shouldn't speculate on this, but I believe it was maybe just trying to find a body. It's her first year playing basketball, at least for the Jackrabbits. So maybe a situation a la Gianna Riley last year. Okay, Lynn, free throw line jumper, no good. Nice rebound there by Mesa Byam. Two minutes to go here in the third quarter. Gonzaga in front here, still playing tough defense, denying the basketball and a turnover. Boy, Yvonne Egypt just going to work down there on the defensive end of the floor. That's now 13 turnovers in this game for the Jackrabbits. Kaylin. Back to Maxwell. Brenna drives the baseline. Her shot blocked by Byam. Couple great back-to-back -back plays there by Byam. Dakota State on offense here. Reverse layin' up and in from Tollefson. That is her first made field goal of the season. She was one for four from the line before that bucket. Strong. Three pointer, no good. About a minute to go here in the third quarter. Here's Meyer, Paige Meyer. Nice bounce pass, and Brooklyn Meyer lays it up and in. Seventy-one forty-six here in the kennel. Here's Strong. Hollingsworth for three, buries it. Eliza red hot from behind the line of recent. So how many teams do you know that runs a set play to get your post an open three look? How tough is that? About a five second difference between the shot clock and game clock here. Shot clock is still on. Here's Byam. Skip pass. Tollefson drives to the corner. Wayward pass out of bounds. Another turnover. The Zags will have about nine seconds remaining on the clock here. So this is the best. You know this play is set for you. You come off that screen, and you know you're already locking in. You've run this over and over in practice. 
and we've and you've mentioned we've talked about how well she's been shooting lately. Brenna Maxwell step back to beat the buzzer, can't quite get it to go. But the Zags still very comfortable in this game. They lead 74-46 at the end of the third quarter. Take a break and come back with the start of the fourth right here on SWX. Game is brought to you by MultiCare Health System. And in fashion of this game, it started on the defensive end for Gonzaga, and then it led to Eliza Hollingsworth burying the three. Whether you're at home or in the kennel, MultiCare's team of doctors, nurses, and specialists partner with you all season long. That is our MultiCare Health System play of the game. Eliza Hollingsworth in this game with 14 points, has not missed a shot from the field. She's five for five. Yvonne Ejim right behind her with 16 points, eight of 13, and Brenna Maxwell with 15 points, seven of 16. So up and down the roster, it's been a good day shooting. Here to start the fourth quarter, Zags in a comfortable lead. Looks like they're well on their way to win number 11 on the season. Here's Kaylin Tron, now there's Hollingsworth. Inside, Mount Hyben back on the floor. Somehow got that ball around to Hollingsworth. Can't quite get the shot to go. Now just kind of wrapped that one around there, the back of the defender and found Hollingsworth there. Brooklyn Meyer, the Zags have done a great job defending her. She's got just four points in this game. But they go inside, this is Tori Nelson. Ball tied up, this will be a jump ball. The possession will stay with the Jackrabbits. Now you talk about Brooklyn Meyer, she averages 17 points. You said she's leading the Summit League. She's the Summit League's leading scorer and she's got four points. And it's not like it was just, you know, a flat out miserable day shooting. It's not like she came out here and went two for 19 or something. The Zags have just done such a good job denying her any looks mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. They've almost completely taken her out of the game on that end of the floor. It's been really, really impressive to watch. And the, the Zags has a, not only Brooklyn Meyer, but Paige Meyer, their second leading scorer, who almost scores 17 points a game. She's only got seven on the, the game so far as well. So you take those two out, um, the Jackrabbits only had three players that average double figures. Well, I think what's really impressive is you look at this Zags team, and you know with what a force Ejim is inside and how well the Trong shoot it, and Brennan Maxwell having games where she <laughs> simply will not miss. As good as the offense is, as we see Kay Leetron can connect on the mid-range shot, a run out here for Nelson, and she lays it in. But as good as the Zags are on offense, if they play defense like mm -hmm. this, they are they go from scary to downright yes. terrifying. Yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. And I think offense offense comes very easy to this team. They are they are offensive-minded players. They score really well. Um, it's that defensive effort, that energy that you have to bring, and it can't be just 90% of the team. It has to be every single player out there on the same page with the same effort. Kaylin Trong through traffic, can't connect, takes a tumble, and mm. she's down behind the play. Kaylin Trong, and they'll stop the game now. She kind of went into the basket stanchion a little bit. Just trying to get to the rack there and went in with so much speed that came down and just ran out of real estate there. Hope she's okay. You see Lisa Fortier there checking on her player. Yeah, I don't see her, you know, reaching for anything. So maybe just, you know, collecting herself after a really hard fall, hopefully. Kaylin on the night. Eight points, four assists. Also with a couple of steals as she gets to her feet. Here's a look at what happened a second ago. Yeah, she just took a tumble and hit yeah. that basket stanchion. Kind of like hit her back yeah. a little bit in an awkward and space. And those are padded, but there's not, mm, they're not yeah. soft. There's <laughs> a difference. Yeah. We'll keep our eye over there on the bench, make sure she's okay. I believe that was uh, Peyton Muma uh, <laughs> looking in. <laughs> give, give, give the expert opinion good there. Good vibes. <laughs> so it's out to go to state on offense here. Just been a tough day for the Jackrabbits, a team that will compete for the Summit League Championship, the really kind of the class of that conference. This game does not tell the story. 
As here we got a foul on Paige Meyer trying to get an offensive rebound out of Eliza Hollingsworth hands, but got her on the arm there. Speaking of Eliza, she's got a double-double now. 14 points, 11 rebounds. Her third double-double of the year. It's been a great season for her. As here's Kay Lee Chong. Thought about a three. Instead, we'll swing it around. Mount Hypens will try a three. A little bit off. Hollingsworth oh. just <laughs> threw it up there and got it to go. Hey, she's perfect on the day. Unbelievable. I was, she I mean, was completely sideways. It, it's just been, it's been really impressive to see the step she has taken lately. Yeah. And I just, I keep going back to that game against Cal where she was one of 11. Mm. And the very next game she comes out and doesn't only put up a shot here or there. She, she stays aggressive on offense and it's paid off. And she hits the free throw as well. And you know, in the past, it's always, to me, it seems like it's been done quietly by Hollingsworth. And she's starting to make some big noise now. Absolutely. I, and I think she can make a really big riot if she continues on this path. I think you're absolutely right, depending on how the rest uh, seven and a half minutes roughly of this game goes. If she stays in the game, she's creeping in on her career high of 22. That was earlier this season against Liberty. Right now she's at 17. Foul on the inside on Eliza. That's her third. Nobody really in any foul trouble for the Zags. A near turnover. The Jackrabbits stay with the ball. Meyer to Meyer, but a great tip there by Trong. And then Hybens walks the tightrope to come away with the steal. Now 15 turnovers in this game. Now some of those were unforced errors, but most of them, Steph, just has been yeah. the result of great defense. Hollingsworth for three. Oh, oh. can't get it to go. <laughs> but she, she's in one of those rhythms right now where as soon as it comes off, your, off her hand, you think it's going yeah. in. Yeah. Claire O'Connor picks up a foul there. Esther Little set to check in for the Zags. And it'll be Kelly Stokes headed to the bench. Here's Jenna Hopp with it now, reverses the ball. That's Mathewitz. It's by him. They're trying to get it into Meyer and Kaylee Trong just sneaking around back there. They can tell. I don't want to say they're telegraphing their passes, but obviously with a player of that caliber, you know they're going to want to get it inside. The Zags are ready to jump that lane every time. Yeah, they're just reading the help defense. They saw it looked like Brooklyn Meyer actually had that wide open, that seal for that pass, but the Zags are honed in on her for that help side. By him. Mid-range shot, good. Von Ejim getting ready to check back in at the next stoppage. Kay Lee kicks it out, Hollingsworth. Now here's O'Connell. O'Connor, excuse me, not O'Connell. <laughs> Three on the way, no good. Offensive board by Claire. Oh, a great feed to Hollingsworth. Spins, can't get it to go. But another second chance and that one's good. Great extra effort by the Zags. They've been doing that all game, just crashing those offensive boards. Here's one tipped into the backcourt. It was legally grabbed there by Hop. Zags just playing tight defense all down the floor. Hop will line up a three and hits it. Real pretty. It's been a struggle for Jenna Hop shooting the three to start mm -hmm. the year, so good to see that one go down. Makes her now three of 11 on the season. And now we've got a foul. And that will go against Ellie Kolbeck. Ejim back on the floor. Eliza Hollingsworth heads to the bench. Don't know if we'll see her again. But even if we do not, what a performance yeah. she turned in. Brenna Maxwell. 
strong. Now Egypt. 10 seconds on the shot clock here. Zex looking for an open lane. Kaylee for three. A little bit off. Oh, what a rebound by Von Egem out to Hybens. Mount thought about the three. Yeah. Egem, she can shoot from there if you don't get up on her. Six on the shot clock. Esther Little has the ball took, taken out of her hands. Good defense there by the Jacks. Mm -hmm. Into the corner. That's Velostin. Egypt denying by him the ball down there. Jack's looking to try and get it to her. They do kick it back out. Hop. The pass. Tip, but by him able to grab it for a minute, but then it goes out of bounds, and that'll send us to a break. Zags up big, just a few minutes away from grabbing the win here at the kennel. Well, Gonzaga's upcoming schedule is brought to you by Idaho Central Credit Union as we look ahead for the Zags. Like we said, a stretch of three games in six days. They'll face Arizona and then New Mexico. Then after the new year, they start conference play, and who better to start it against than Portland? That'll be a yeah. fun pair of games this year. And then Santa Clara is our next, next SWX game. That's on January 11th. Idaho Central Credit Union, your fine Financial Success Fan Club presents the Zags' upcoming schedule. It's going to be interesting to watch the conference this year. Uh, you know, I think there were some concerns about the strength of this conference on the women's side once BYU left, but Portland said, yeah. excuse us, we are also here to compete with the Zags. Yeah, and Santa Clara as well. Right. Tess Hill playing really well for them. Uh, the Broncos have done fairly well, and they're going to be a tough one. This is going to be a shot clock violation as the good defense by Gonzaga continues. So just over four minutes to go here. The Zags just a dominant performance here in the kennel today. That home win streak will extend to 25. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. That's third in the country, only behind UNLV at 26 and South Carolina at 46. Yeah, pretty good company to be in there. It's just, you know, just being good on. We got good, a, we got a oh, shoeless Ejim yeah. out here. Ejim's <laughs> short a shoe. And they'll uh, let her grab it. Oh, here we go, Callie Stokes. We all need friends like Callie Stokes. <laughs> yeah. The, Always, the oh, pass oh. was a little long, Callie. <laughs> Coach, 40, <laughs> Coach 48 wasn't impressed. <laughs> no, she wasn't. She's giving Callie a hard time there. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, Callie Stokes, I told you, doing all the extra doing stuff. Doing it all. Doesn't, I mean, doesn't she, light up the She steps. crashes the board. She, <laughs> she'll grab the loose footwear. <laughs> she's just hanging out, like, chilling on the bench now. <laughs> I think she's trying to plead her case to her teammates. Here we go. Oh, there was also an insert in yeah, there that she had to put in there. But she and doesn't get the assist. See you later. No. <laughs> <laughs> Round of applause for Ejim as she gets her shoe taken care of. The Jacks have the ball here. There's high, high expectations for this Gonzaga team. Just that's, you know, the, the the downside of being such a good program is that, you know, there's there's such high expectations, but the way they've played at times this year, even in their losses, they haven't played terrible. It's it's just there's so much talent on this team. You know they're well coached. They do all the little things like hit free throws. Brenna Maxwell will get three of them coming up here. Just uh, it's it just really it's it's really just an impressive unit to watch work. Yeah, and that's just part of the norm now. That those expectations. I mean, this has been decades. You know of this program and they've always got the target on their back in the WCC and that's just something that they have to deal with yeah, every it's year it's a, and it's that's a, a good th yeah exactly I believe that was actually not a shooting foul that came on the ground so now we'll get another foul here so Maxwell will not go to the free throw line instead it will be Naya Juku Naya started her career at the University of Utah, not unlike Britta Maxwell, and then transferred here. Still in her freshman eligibility class. She misses the first.
just one of those players. That's another thing about you know when a program gets this level. There's players that you you go. You don't want the players that are gonna you know graduate or something to to be gone. But you're like, ooh, I can't wait to watch this player or that yeah. player when they when they get some more time on the floor. Which yeah. we were all saying about the Trongs and Eachem mm -hmm. and Ma and Hollingsworth. You know throughout the years too. Inbounds pass to Brennan Maxwell. Three minutes left here at the kennel. The Jackrabbits going back to that zone D. Kaylee for three. Good. I believe we just hit the, uh, the Taco Bell three-point counter. Yep. Oh, Tenth yeah. three-pointer of the game. I was wondering why there was such a, a round of applause. <laughs> Not that Kaylee hitting that bucket doesn't deserve applause, yeah, but it yeah. was a little louder than your average uh, basket to make it a 27-point lead. Good find from Naya, three on the way, Taco. But again, so look at the attention. So Naya's looking, she's facing up, she's reading the D. You have to suck her down onto Ejum. You have to collapse down, and because of that, Naya was able to find her shooter out there on the wing. Lon Ejim checks out, believe her night might be done. And a good night it was. But just still look at, I'm just impressed at, at you know, with a score like this with, with relatively little time left, the, the effort, especially on defense. The possession before this, Esther knocked one into the backcourt. She knocked one away there. Now she's guarding up tight on the perimeter. And there's a shot clock violation. And these, but these are the habits that great teams right? have, is you keep the gas pedal down for the full 40 minutes because you don't want to get into that bad habit or pick Absolutely. up bad habits. So you have to continue and be focused for 40 minutes. Claire O'Connor back on the floor here for the Zags. Right in front of the Gonzaga bench there. Pass inside, Mount Hyben skipped to the corner, Little corrals it at the feet, Kaylee for another three. That one's no good, Ojuku the rebound, turns around, puts it off glass, can't get it to go. O'Connor comes away with it, steps through and, oh, can't quite get it to go, but we'll go to the free throw line. Again, just effort, what mm -hmm. can you say? Zags in this game with 15 offensive rebounds. 36 for the game, 15 of those offensive. <laughs> Callie Stokes on the game, on the floor I should say, and Kaylee Trong heads to the bench. Under two minutes to play here in the kennel. It has been all zag since the opening tip. They never trailed in this game and never looked like they were ever going to relinquish that lead that they opened up right as the game began. Jenna Hopp with a bucket there. Ooh, pass down. Naya Juku skied for it. Mesa Bayam, I don't think that pass <laughs> was coming, but just by the nature of being there, yeah. broke it up. Colbeck can't quite get it to go, but we'll go to the line. Mount Hybens picks up the foul. One minute, 18 seconds to go. Colbeck can't hit the first. Second one on the way is good from Colbeck. Zags still working around. We'll get a couple more possessions here before all said and done. Ojuku, her pass tipped away. And it's the Jackrabbits coming away with it. One minute to go here in Spokane. Hop, thought about a three. We'll instead drive, kick it to the corner. Three on the way, that one's no good. Offensive board, second chance won't go either. O'Connor brings it up the floor. 
Should be the last possession of the game for the Zags. Get it to Hybens. Kick to the corner. O'Connor, three-pointer won't go. Offensive board by Esther Little. And you thought it was going to be there. I, I, I did. I did. <laughs> Three-second difference between the shot and game clock, so the Zags likely have to take one more shot here. Well, now the kickball violation will turn the shot clock off, so I just need to stop making predictions in this <laughs> game, it turns out. Head coach Lisa Fortier recently went over 300 games coached here at Gonzaga and continued the success from her predecessor and continues to take this program mm -hmm. to new heights year yeah. after year. 83-58, the final score here at the Kennel. The Zags with a dominant performance. Didn't start the season in the AP poll, but they've cracked it, and they are playing like a team that deserves it and might even be headed a little bit north in the rankings. We'll take a break and come back with our player of the game here at the Kennel.